Hi. So what freaks you out? Anybody? Anyone scared of the dark? What? Snakes? Clowns? Cockroaches? Texture of eggplant? So I'm Nicole France. I'm the creative director for Capital Music Group, a group of record labels in Los Angeles. And I will share my biggest fear. It's this. Standing up here, talking to all of you very nice people. I'm sweaty. It is crazy what it's doing to my insides right now. And all of my very intense physical reactions to public speaking are a normal response to something that might harm me. My body is flooding me with adrenaline to aid in a quick escape. I'm conserving breath. So it's comforting to know that my body is responding correctly to fear, although it is not at all helpful. <laughs> so when I was 15, I was in a very big piano recital. I was playing a duet with my little sister. And as we took the stage, I was overcome by stage fright. I was shaking so intensely that I couldn't hit a note, which was totally fine because I couldn't remember what I was supposed to play anyway. And my poor sister next to me, starting and restarting her part of the duet, waiting for me to chime in. And I was frozen. All I could do was stand up and walk straight out of the building, much to my poor sister's shock, who was left to play one half of a duet. And that's indicative of who I am as a public speaker. <laughs> so there are fears of all sizes. In addition to duets, I am also freaked out by swamps and deep underground parking garages. Neither of these impact my life in any real way. They're kind of the quirky fears. We can avoid them much of the time. But the fear that I want to talk about is the kind that gets in the way of our success, how to find it, and what to do about it. So in my job as creative director, I'm often the first or second stop for a musical artist in what will hopefully be an incredible career trajectory. In this meeting, we sit and we start to set our visual direction, and it's my chance to get to know as much as I can about the artist. This is where I can see their ambition and their drive and their talent and their creativity, and sometimes I can see fear. Because when you have hoped and dreamed your entire life about being a musical artist with a record deal, and you're standing right there, and this is true for any one of us that's on the path to achieving our goals. Right at that moment of the brink of success, we can totally freak out. Fear can make us start to doubt everything that brought us to that point. Our talent, our commitment, our authenticity, and every single one of us is vulnerable to that fear. So here's my experience. I love my job. I get to work with artists and help them express themselves visually, which is one of my favorite things in the world. It's different every single day because our artists are all different, and so I love that it's constantly changing. And I love that there is virtually no need for me to ever speak in public. <laughs> so a year ago, there I was, just doing my job, and my work approached me about taking part in a leadership program. And as they're telling me how wonderful this program is and how honored I should feel to be selected for it, I am screaming in my head, get on with it, get on with it, there's a public speaking part to this, I know there is, there always is. And sure enough, the program culminated in a team presentation to our most senior staff. A team presentation to our most senior staff, and I have to be on this team. So my brain goes into total fight or flight mode, and I'm trying any excuse I can think of, I'm sure looking completely crazy in the process, to get out of doing it. 
and I'm told there's no way to get out of it. I have to do this presentation. So I go home, and I am so upset. I'm so upset that I conclude that I have to quit my job. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So I figure it's better for me to go out on a high note than to stand up and humiliate myself in front of these 46 executives. And I'm totally OK with it. I've worked for 16 years to build this career that I'm really pretty proud of, but I'm totally going to walk away from because of this public speaking. So I know that that would sound crazy to anyone who lives outside of the bubble of fear of public speaking. And as the weekend wore on, I kind of had to admit it was starting to sound crazy to me. So I did what I always do. I made a list. I made two lists, actually. <laughs> so this is my first list. So quit my job, just one reason, team presentation, which, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, which I am, uh, once they divided it amongst the team, I only had to talk for two minutes. <laughs> reasons not to quit my job, I ran out of paper before I ran out of reasons, and I had to stop at 10 because that's nice and symmetrical. <laughs> so my other list was where I really thought about things that I hadn't achieved yet in my job and my long-term goals. And one of the big ones is Grammy nomination. I haven't gotten one of those yet. I'd like to get one. But also, the way I get to work with our artists and encourage them in their visual goals, I want to do that with other people, not just our artists, but I'd like to be able to help other people. It's one of the most gratifying things in the work that I do. So either through mentoring or teaching or speaking, I want to be able to help anyone kind of on the path to their goals. I, in the building, I get to be an advocate for art and design. Other people are advocates for music and marketing and all these other things, but I get to advocate for art and design, which is obviously I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel it was the most important thing. So I'd love to be able to do that in a bigger way. I'd love to be able to talk about visual strategy in a larger context. I do that one-on-one -on -one with our artists, but I'd like to do that in a larger room. So obviously this list kind of has a theme. And I'm sitting there thinking about the way that public speaking and my inability to do it has affected me. And joking around, I was laughing about karaoke because I've tried and I've failed at karaoke because I cannot stand up in front of people. And obviously I work in music and I see people stand up and perform to people all the time. And just this very simple act, this very joyful act, you know, I kind of always looked at it like, oh, I wish I could do that, but I was never able to. So I kept karaoke on my list. It started as a joke, but really it's true. I just want to be able to karaoke. So, when I was looking at the way that I've been able to work, which is in a small capacity, two to three people helping at a time, you know, sitting with two to three people to talk about their careers or my career, the way that my fear was obstructing me was very, very clear. It was holding me back in every meeting I couldn't speak up in or every panel I wouldn't sit on or every karaoke night I turned down. So how will you know if fear is in your way? Well. I think that you have to look at what your goals are, and not just your tomorrow goals, but your 10 or 15 or 20 year from now goals. Because when I wrote down speaking on my list, there was zero possibility that it would end up with this, me here a year later, like no chance at all. So I really urge you to be wildest dream about writing down what your goals are, and then look at where you are, and then start to map what you think it takes, the steps, to get you to that point. And I think that what starts to take shape is the places where you're being held back. And one of the places that I think that we get held back is when opportunity comes to us. And that sounds crazy, but I think when somebody calls you and says, hey, do you want to come speak in front of a bunch of people? And you're like, ha, ha. Yeah, I know I should probably want to do that, but no. And you sit on that decision for a really long time, and 
You know, you're going back and forth. Yes, I should. No, I can't. These opportunities pass us by without us ever getting our hat in the ring. So I think that our indecision comes from fear standing in our way of something that we know we should be pursuing. So whether it's someone wanting to see a specific kind of work that you have and you have to update something or calling you in for a face-to-face -face interview and you know trying to get out of going, these things are fear blocking your way. I think that in order to succeed, we need role models and we need to look at people who have taken a path that we can sort of emulate and follow. I think role models are so important and mentors. And so I think that fear can sometimes make us envious of other people and fill us with excuses when we see someone who has a job or a career path that we want. It can make us envious and think that they had something that we don't have. And instead of doing what we should be doing, which is reaching out to the person and seeing if they have any words of encouragement or you know, might be willing to mentor. I mean, people like to do that stuff, but fear and envy will keep you on the sidelines. Fear fuels the thoughts that keep us up at night. I know all about this. I've had a few sleepless nights since I agreed to be here. These are like the worst case scenarios of fears. And you start to believe them when you tell yourself these things night after night. And I think that when we face a lot of the same obstacles in our life or our careers, the things that keep happening to us, I truly believe that the universe is kind of dumping these in our path and telling us, like, until you fix this thing, until you deal with this, I'm going to keep putting it here. It's going to keep getting in your way until you can get past it. So I think that until we deal with it, it's just always going to be in our way. So what kind of fears? What are some of the common ones? Fear of failure. I think that that's what my fear is kind of tied to, the fear of standing up and everything going horribly wrong, like forgetting some of the things I was going to say. That's happening right now. <laughs> and it's OK, right? I mean, we'll get through this together. But in a room full, thank you, thank you. <laughs> in a room full of creative people, you all have amazing ideas and innovations and aspirations. And if you're afraid to fail, you will never let those see the light of day. So in this room especially, fear of failure, we have to get past that. Fear of taking a risk. That can look like quitting your day job and going out on your own or going back to school for something. If we don't risk, we never get anywhere. So, you know, fear of risk is terrible. Fear of success. Fear of getting to a point in your career and afraid that people will find out that you don't know what you're doing or that you're a fraud. I see this all the time. There's also, um, the fear of not being smart enough. And in this room, that can look like not being creative enough. And how that manifests is really detrimental. It keeps you invisible. Uh, you won't speak up or speak out. And you doubt your instincts. And your instincts are some of your best stuff. So um, I think all of these fears are tied to a, a desire that we have to not appear vulnerable. I'm, trying really hard not to appear vulnerable up here, telling you all of my deepest, darkest fears. But I think for creative people, the act of being creative is vulnerable in itself. I mean, we can't imagine something and bring it into the world if we're not being a little bit vulnerable. So I think vulnerability is where creativity lives, and I think it's where we practice our best bravery. Thanks. So back to my presentation. I was exhausted by spending the weekend making lists. And I had had enough. And I'd had enough of letting fear decide what opportunities I could and couldn't take. So I went in the next day to my office. And I told them, I have this terrible fear of public speaking, and I need your help. And they told me, oh, no, no, Nicole, everybody hates public speaking. 
And I said, no, 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 remember that time that I hyperventilated in the intern presentation and I had to leave the room for 10 minutes? <laughs> and then she was like, oh yeah, call this person. So she gave me the name of a public speaking coach. And I worked with this public speaking coach for four months. And it was terrible work, you know, watching yourself speak on video, just the most self-conscious and awkward stuff that there is. But little by little, she helped me chip away at my fear until there we were, rehearsing the night before the big presentation. So I was a total, total wreck. I cannot gloss over that. I was just a disaster before I got on stage. And then, you know, I got up and I did it. Uh, it wasn't exactly as I had it written down, but I survived. I did not run out of the room. And my team, we actually did really well. <laughs> so well, in fact, that we got to do it again two weeks later. Yay! <laughs> but I have to say, I felt this like really particular kind of accomplishment that I had never felt in my life or in my entire career. I mean, it was kind of Olympic, you know? And so when I was asked to be on a panel a few weeks later, I agreed. <laughs> and I did that. And it was actually kind of fun. And then I got called and asked if I would be here today. And I did. And I did so in the hopes that I could maybe just help one person here see if fear is in their way. And holding you back from what? So. What next? I, I want to tell you that when you can move fear out of your way a little bit, growth and opportunity just come to you. It's amazing. We spend a ton of effort. If my body will flood me with adrenaline when I'm afraid, my brain is always scanning every opportunity that comes my way for like, is this one safe? Is this uncomfortable for her? What will we let her do? all the time. That is a lot of effort that's going into managing your opportunities. So if I can urge you to do anything, I urge you to take action, take a risk, tackle one of these tasks at a time. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to fix any of it, but just tackle one task to put you closer. You can find a professional like I did. It was great. You can get a mentor, which is amazing. But you can be a mentor, which is also amazing. You can challenge yourself. But most importantly, every day, we should be being brave about what we do. If I can urge you to just step in the direction of your fear, I know that you will be rewarded. So once I got this out of my way, or once I, you know, agreed to do this and have been working on all this stuff, I have to tell you, I've had so much more creative energy and just energy in general. When I stopped worrying about the fear so much, it just became possibility. I'm painting, I'm writing, and neither one of these things was like on my list of things I needed to get to. I just have inspiration. And I have not turned down a karaoke night in seven months. <laughs> I want to tell you my karaoke song, though. It's Islands in the Stream, and that's a duet. made it. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> oh, that was great. There was this sort of cognitive dissonance as I was watching you saying, I can't public speak, and watching you totally nail it just fine. Can you believe that? Like, so you need to move that to the past tense at this point. I need to take a picture for my sister because she will not believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So your job, you have all these jobs here, you know, at, at Capitol Records, and you work with these kids who probably can't do much of anything, these rock star kids. I'm, I'm, I'm going to generalize a lot here right now, so you can, you can not, you don't have to deny it. I'm, we're, no, we're, we know we respect and love them all. But, okay, so they can't do anything, you have to do all these things for them. You have to, you have to you know, make their records come out, you have to do all these things, and the one thing they can do, the one thing they're completely confident about is they can stand in front of stage and just go, look at me, I'm awesome. You know? They can. Yeah, and so what is it like to be some punk kid, you know, every day who can do that, and you're like, oh, what's the hell, what's going on? <laughs> well, I tell you, honestly, it's humbling because, I mean, you're all creative people, and I have to say, I'm so honored to be able to be trusted with someone's lifelong dream, mm -hmm. even for just a second, like even just in a conversation that someone is going to open up and tell me the things that they want for their career and for their lives and why. And I've been singing since I was three years old. And when creativity moves you to get past that, they might have been afraid at some point. I mean, none of them will ever tell me that. But <laughs> the fact that they can do that, it's really humbling to be around that. And I probably do get inspiration from that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it's frustrating that someone can just jump up and be like amazing without, you know, six months of working with a coach. <laughs> <laughs> that takes, um, that is real guts to watch yourself on videotape doing that. Did you, do you remember like the worst thing that you saw that you didn't like? I mean, my mouth opens and I'm like, that is my voice. Like, <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. I mean, I d I've done radio for 15 years. It took me about seven years to not want to punch myself in the face <laughs> when I heard my own voice. Yes. yes, and I also realized I literally, the first three times, was backing out of the room as she was filming me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so was your staff aware of your sort of struggle? Yes. Okay. I have amazing people that I work with. We've built this incredible team. And I, I, you know, when you work with people that really inspire you, it makes it even better. I mean, I love my job, but to come to work every day and be around them is just amazing. It makes it great. So they've been really supportive. They're all waiting for me to text them right now. But um, <laughs> they've sat through so many presentations you know, so many iterations of this. I really, I feel for them right now. They're glad I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> but have they, have they, have you inspired them to like, have, have these, these blockages that you're talking about? I mean, there's, there's blockages in all creative work. I mean, this is easily transferable. I hope so, because I think that this is the one thing that this little path has shown me. Like, I really do feel so, um, honestly and earnestly passionate about people not being blocked by stuff. If you try something and you don't like it, fine, move on. But don't let fear get in your way of those decisions. So with them, you know, I'm trying to be, we try to inspire one another, but I'm, I'm working with them on making sure that personal work stays a priority because obviously I'm like, did you finish those ad banners yet? Did you do this? <laughs> but also like, hey, you were working on a painting. What's going on with that? Because if we aren't creating all the time and we're not creating with passion, it, they can come to work and it will show in their ad banners. You know, I, I think that staying really pure in our creativity is so important. Um, so, so I have to say this because I drive down to LA a lot from San Francisco, and I love seeing the Capitol Records building. And it's like an icon in and of itself, and it's also an icon that you guys use. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what is that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you, when I first started working there, I got a call from public radio, and they were doing a story about in every disaster movie that's set in Los Angeles, <laughs> the Capitol Tower gets destroyed, and how did I feel about that? And, I really, I wanted to do it, but my corporate people mm -hmm. said that maybe it wasn't such a good look for the Capitol Tower. I was so bummed because it's always getting destroyed. Oh. But we love to work there. I mean, I don't think that there's a person that works there that drives up and is like, oh, that building. <laughs> we always, we get like kind of dorky excited about working there. And we're always Instagramming different, like, 
we're terrible. We're always Instagramming like the mail slot or the elevator buttons or the signs that say quiet recording. We're like, oh, that's so cool. So much recording. So I think that anyone that works in that building really has a sense of its place and time and music history and design history. And the building's just been redone from the, you know, from the bottom up after years of just kind of sitting in this like 70s, stuck in the 70s remodel. And it is gorgeous. So it's really, it's a great building to work in. Yeah, I, just, I love seeing it all yeah. the time. Yeah, me too. I mean, so um, it's funny because it's, it makes sense to me that it's the building that gets destroyed because there aren't a lot of iconic buildings in LA. You know, I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, that's it's the Hollywood like, sign and it's and the Capitol and it's Tower. And, like, and, and we get the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, yeah, it's always gone. Like, <laughs> Godzilla comes for some reason. She really yeah. digs that bridge. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so now that you have no fears, besides eggplant, um, <laughs> wh I mean, so what is this? I mean, do you, did, so are you knocking off the rest of that list? Well, I should say, like, I still obviously, I'm still totally freaked out by this, by the way. <laughs> I'm just handling it a lot better. That's right. So, you know, this idea that we're going to conquer all of our fears is not exactly what I mean. You know, we're still going to have them, but we just kind of have to face them head on. But yeah, maybe. I mean, now I'm like, well, what next? Right. I don't know. You know, maybe I will uh, get serious about a singing career. <laughs> a solo, maybe karaoke. Did you, did, have you soloed yet? Exactly. You know, not well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still need someone up there with If me. you slice eggplant really thin and Never. fry it, it really works. It's pretty good. Oh, wow. Well. Can't do it. <laughs> I guess we can only conquer one fear exactly, today. Exactly, exactly. Um, thank you so much for being here. We really Thanks, everyone. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun.